Assalamu alaikum greetings. Today we're doing a revision of all the types of journals we've done and understanding why we have a general journal. So we have a cash receipts journal where we record all the cash that has been received. So we the source documents that we use are a receipt or a cash register tape or a deposit slip. So every time we receive money into our business, we put it into the cash receipts journal and we are uh, debiting our bank account. Then we have a cash payments journal, which is our CPJ. We use a check counterfoil or a bank statement as our source document. We record all the cash payments that we are making in our business, all the money that's going out of our business and our bank account is getting credited. Then we have a petty cash journal where we have petty cash vouchers and we have small cash payments. They are too small or insignificant to put them into the CPJ. So we put it into the petty cash journal. So those are the cash transactions. Then we move on to credit transactions where we have a debtor's journal and we have a credit sale. So what happens is the debtor comes to our business. He buys goods, but he doesn't buy it on cash. So we can't record it in the CRJ. So we use the duplicate invoice because we have given him the original invoice. So we use the duplicate invoice to record our credit sales into our debtor's journal. Then we have our debtor's allowance journal where we, the debtors have a problem with the goods and they return it to us or they claim a discount or there's an error on the invoice and we issue them a credit note, right? And we are those goods are getting returned. Then we have a creditor's journal. A creditor's journal is where we go out and make credit purchases. So we go into another business, they give us the original invoice and we're recording all the purchases that we have done on credit. So it means that we cannot record it in our CPJ. We haven't paid cash for it yet. So we're recording it in our creditors journal to show how much of money we are owing to our creditors. And that goes into our creditors journal. Then we have a creditors allowance journal where we're returning some of the goods. We're unhappy with it. Either they damaged or they broken or the invoice is incorrect or they haven't given us a discount. So we issue a debit note for those goods and we're returning it back to the creditor. So those, we've been through all the journals, we've done all the transactions and these are the important source documents that you need to be used to and the transactions and then we've done the general ledger and the postings for all of these journals. So remember these journals are done on a daily basis and recorded for one month and at the end of the month what you do is you're posting to the general ledger. Okay, now we're moving on to the general journal and why do we have a general journal? Is that sometimes the transaction cannot fit into either one of these journals here. So then we open up a general journal and we're going to go through all the different types of general journals and all the examples. Okay, so our first example would be uh, bad debts. Okay, number one would be bad debts. So we're going to go through and see why do we have a bad debt. Okay, so let's go through this example here. We have a general journal. We're opening up a general journal. And now I have an example to show you. So what has happened here is that Mr. B is the debtor, right? So he's gone to this company, A, or our business A, and he has gone and he's bought some goods on credit, and now he owes the business some money, okay? Now A gives Mr. B an invoice. Why an invoice? Because he's come and he owes you the money, so you've given him an invoice to show him he's owing you 300 rand. And how would we record these transactions in the T accounts? We would debit the debtor with 300 rand, we would credit our sales with 300 rand. We would debit cost of sales. I'm just saying for an example here, we're all very good at this, 200 rand. And we're crediting our trading stock at 200 rand. Okay, so that's the four transactions that we've been through. That is coming off from your invoice. That will be calculated according to your markup or it's given to you in the transaction. So what you need to remember is that Mr. B is the debtor. He comes to your business and he buys goods on credit. And then you've given him an invoice to show that he's owing you this money here, right? So now what has happened is either this um, 
this debtor here, he goes insolvent. So insolvent means is that his whole estate, his whole business has gone into, he's either become bankrupt or he's lost everything. So then you'll see in the transaction that he, they say he's gone insolvent, he doesn't have any money to pay you, or he runs away or he disappears or something happens to him, and then you can't get that money back from him anymore. So now we need to cancel this invoice here. So we actually need to cancel this invoice out because he, he will not be able to pay us that invoice. So what we have to do is we have to create a bad debt to show that that invoice is not going to be paid anymore. So here's our data here. The data is owing us this transaction, nothing happens to it. It stays the same because that stock went out of our business, so we leave that transaction alone. This is the transaction we're focusing on here. We are not going to receive that money anymore. The debtor is owing us 300 rands. We need to write that debtor off. So what we're going to do is we're going to debit our bad debts with 300 rand. And uh, bad debts are an expense. So you need to remember we are losing income now. We are not going to receive that money in our bank account anymore. So we're debiting bad debts with 300 rand. And we are crediting our debtor with 300 rand. So what has happened here? We've written off his account and we've created an expense, which later on you will see it goes into the income statement. So we have to write it off. So what we have done here essentially is we've said debit bad debts with 300 rand and we've credited our debtor. So we've written our debtor off with 300 rand. So this is the part that is going to go into your general journal and I'm going to show you how to do the transaction in the general journal. I have another example here. So my second example says that Mr. C owes, owes A, which is our company there, 320 rand. The account is overdue. That's another important word. We're going to see later on why. And A decides to write it off. So you've waited a long time and you realize that this guy is just not coming back. He's not going to pay. He's hiding away. He's disappeared. I can't phone him. He's switching his phone off. So you realize that now this 320 rand is bye-bye. I'm not going to be getting it anymore. So we go to our general journal. So a bad debt goes into our general journal. We're going to debit our bad debts with 320 rand. And we're going to credit our debt with... 320 rand, you'll write the narration account written off as bad. So if we're looking at the T accounts here, there's the debtor here, Mr. C. He's owing you 320 rand, right? What has happened is we are debiting our bad debts with 320 rand, and we are writing this debt off. We're crediting our debtor with 320 rand, so we canceling him out, and this is gone in as an expense in our eventually in our income statement, which will be we will do later on. And to show you that now you know we're going to receive that income, you're going to write it off as a bad debt. Okay, here's one more example that I want to go to go through. So this one says Jack owes one thousand rand. He has been declared insolvent. His estate paid a dividend of twenty-five cents in a rand and the balance of the account must be written off. So there's two parts of this question here. First of all, we're receiving some part of that payment there, and then the rest of it must be written off. So we're going to divide this 1,000 rand into two things. The 1,000 rand is divided into 25 cents per rand. So what you're going to do is you're going to say 25 over 100 multiplied by 1,000, which is going to give me... 25 divided by 100 multiplied by 1,000, it gives me 250 rand. Okay, so this is the amount that is received. I've received 25 cents, which is 25 cents over 25 over 100 multiplied by 1,000, which is the debt that is owing here on the top. Okay, and then the rest of it has to be written off as a bad debt. So how much am I writing off is 1,000 minus the 250 rand. So then I'm saying 1,000 minus my 250 rand and 750 rand will be 
the amount that is my bad debt so what I'm doing now is I've got two transactions right I've got some money that has come in which is 250 rand so I can't write off the whole thousand rand so 250 rand I'm going to debit my bank with 250 rand and I'm going to credit my debtor with 250 rand remember the debtor is owing me a thousand rand so I'm crediting my debtor with 250 rand I've received 250 rand from him and this will be recorded in my cash receipts journal and it will be my bank as my details there right then the second part of it is the 750 rand now so what I have to do is I have to debit my bad debts with 750 rand and I'm just bringing these transactions down here so I've already put in the 250 rand which is the cash receipts journal there now this transaction here will go into my general journal okay so I'll put down 750 rand which will be from my general journal and then I've closed off this data and I've written off 750 rand and I've received 250 rand. Can you see the difference between receiving the money as a debtor from the debtor and writing off that as a debt? And remember, this goes into your general journal and it eventually ends up as an expense and not an income in your business.